What's up guys, welcome back to JK Fishing and today we're going to show you guys how to remove and clean your carburetor on your uh, Yamaha F9.9 kicker motor or any similar model that uses the same uh, Yamaha carburetor. So we have had issues running this engine or starting it in colder water or, um, or running it at idle when we do start it up, it tends to die. I think that the pilot jet in the carburetor is clogged, I may be wrong, but we're going to open it up, we're going to clean it and show you guys how we do that and see if it fixes the problem. So stay tuned guys, let's get to the video. So first things first, we got to take the carburetor off the engine. It's sandwiched between the intake and the engine block. There's two long 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in. I, once you take them out, you got to be careful there's a little collar on each of them. If that collar does not come off with it or go back on with it, it will not be tight enough to the block. And you will have uh, fuel air mixture leaking out in between the gasket and the carburetor. And then the second bolt is just hidden behind there. If you have the red adapter on your socket, like I do, it's really simple to get at. Um, and once these two come undone, you gotta be ready for that carburetor to fall because there's nothing else holding it up. And you don't wanna bend those two linkages there. So once that comes out, uh, I grab the, the intake and the carburetor, my two hands kind of hold it up. And I, try, I need to get this intake out of the way. And there's one more little clip that's also bolted down with another 10 millimeter. Thank you, Yamaha. Uh, and I'm just going to remove this uh, clip that attaches to that hose just to move the intake, get it all the way out of the way and straightforward enough. So once, once the intake's out of the way, and I made sure to check that it's clear, as it should be, nothing in it. Um, I made sure I moved on to the um, the choke rod, and there's this little piece, let me find the name of it for you guys, the choke lever joint. Just unclip that and flip that choke rod back. Really straightforward. There's that pin I was pointing to earlier, just there, the that's the throttle screw and the throttle spring. You do not want to touch that or else it will severely screw up your air fuel mixture. So do not touch that. Now this little brass Phillips head screw, this is the throttle, what pins the throttle to that whole assembly, that throttle rod to the assembly. And I just loosen it up and then the carburetor will completely come loose once it's able to slide along that rod. and. You gotta make sure that you catch that gasket. There's three, there's a main one and there's two thinner ones uh, between the carburetor and that engine block. So I grab that and the other two were kind of caked onto the carburetor and engine block. So I grab those later. Now figuring out how to slide this thing off, you kind of just gotta angle the carburetor a bit and be careful not to bend that rod. Now there's one more thing, just the fuel line. These things are super simple. This is probably the easiest part of it all. Just pop off that clip. And then what I like to do is take a flathead screwdriver. So I'll get Giant to go grab me one. And I just work at it evenly on all sides, slowly pry it up, just like a lever. And it'll eventually come off and we'll be able to take the carburetor into the garage and open it up. Okay, so we got the carburetor here. This was that gasket I was talking about before that was kind of caked on there. And so I'm just gonna take it off, put it on the side, remember, for later. There was a little bit of fuel left over in there, so I kind of opened up the throttle a bit, trying to get some of it out. There is also a drain plug at the bottom of the bowl or the float chamber, and you can also unscrew that, but I was gonna open it up anyways and get to it. So there's two screws that hold that float chamber or the bowl. Um, they call it the, what does Yamaha call, it? Yamaha call it the holder <laughs> on their schematics. I don't know why, but uh, there's two of them and they each have a little uh, lock washer there. Um, and they're like a Phillips flathead mix. So when they're really tough to get off, I took this big flathead and just torqued it. Got a lot more torque out of it and wasn't afraid of stripping the screws. So once you get those off, uh, you can remove the whole uh, bolt and when I opened it I was very surprised 
Uh, it was in spotless condition. That gasket there, the float chamber gasket, beautiful condition. Um, no debris, nothing in there. And I was very, very pleased with that. Um, the float was in great condition. I also checked um, the needle valve, which is kind of hidden underneath um, the float on these models. And it was in great condition as well. So then I started getting at some of the jets. So I removed um, that rubber cap, as you saw earlier, that kind of protects it. And um, then I started getting at the, the main jet there, that thick one. And there's two smaller ones. So I took a really narrow flathead in there and I was able to get at the, it's called an air slow jet that I'm taking out right now. And then the other longer jet is called the main nozzle. So these are all at um, different throttles, different jets are used and allow more or less a feel into the chamber and gets mixed with the, the air and the carburetor. So these are what I think are dirty. I think the pilot jet is dirty. That's what um, the one that goes at idle, that pilot jet, Yamaha calls it I believe the um, the air slow jet. I'm pretty sure I might be wrong, but I'm, nonetheless, I'm gonna check all of these. They have these little tiny, like microscopic holes that I think are clogged up. And yeah, as you can see, very small. And any debris could clog them up, and and that'll cause a serious issue because you're not getting enough fuel. And then I started taking off. Uh, then I started taking off this bottom plate and this bottom plate, when I tell you these screws were tightened down, I think someone worked on it before me because it was all scratched up and these screws were severely over tightened. Um, now you do want them tight because there's this gasket in between it and the body of the carburetor. But I went through multiple different types of screwdrivers just to see what I could get the most torque down on and not while not stripping the screws. So once I got all three of them off, I removed this plate and uh, gasket. And they were in, again, great condition. Uh, nothing wrong with them. And don't want to lose it there. And yeah, I was really impressed. Great condition. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, nothing leaking. Um, and then... There was just this little white plug, as you can see there too, that I think I took out later. Um, nothing specific. So now I'm gonna take some carburetor uh, cleaner, carb cleaner, and that's it. Um, you can use brake cleaner as well. Um, it's also fine, I've heard guys using it. But I like to wear gloves for this stuff, just cause you know, why not? And I just sprayed all of the openings in there. Every, through all the jet passages, um, main intake, um, and, and any passageway in this carburetor. It's not rocket science. And yeah, and just clean it all out. When I go to run this engine again, it's gonna be gone real quickly. You can even like, spray this if you don't want to remove the carburetor you can just spray this carb cleaner right into the intake while it's running and uh it's got properties i guess that dissolve particles and uh yeah so then i just looked at all these jets these jets were um i just kind of sprayed through them i'm going to also i think i had a compressor that i decided to take a little needle and spray through those jets as well to clear, make sure they were completely clear as can be. Um, and then I put this little piece back in, that little uh, little plug. And yeah, I took the compressor here, fired it up. And it's not the best attachment that I have for it, but it got a decent amount of pressure out of it. This little, it's like a, a needle for inflating soccer balls. So it doesn't come out the tip, it came out the side kind of, but I was able to kind of stick it into the, into the jets like that and just turn the jet and it got a lot of air pressure, it was great.
So then again, that plug falls out really easily, so be careful with it. Um, it fell out every time I turned over the carburetor, it just popped right out. So make sure that's in before you put the plate and the gasket back on. Um, you can screw that right back down. And yeah, I was really impressed. This carburetor was super, super clean. There's nothing clogged on it. So then, uh, sorry for the camera quality here, but what I did was I took my phone, take your flashlight on your phone, and you shine it from underneath the jet and those little, or um, I guess underneath, and the little jets will actually, the light will come through them and you can see that they're clear. And uh, yeah, super, super easy way to check um, if they're clear. And then I just screwed them back in Yeah. And then don't forget that rubber cap as well. Once you get all those jets screwed in and then, yeah, all you have left, um, is that bowl. That's it. Or that as Yamaha calls it the holder. <laughs> um, let's put that on nice, careful, make sure that gasket doesn't pop out and then hold tight and screw it down. Make sure his lock washers engage. Yeah. Now all we have left guys is to put it back on the engine, I'll show you guys how I connect everything in order again. I, you can do it basically the opposite way you took everything off. I don't think I did that because my brain sometimes goes in like five different directions. But yeah, let's go head outside and put her back on. Okay, so now we're back outside work on the engine. First thing I do is connect that fuel line back to the carburetor, just slide it right on. Sometimes you could actually take some gasoline, rub it on the inside of the fuel line, it'll slide on real easy or any wet substance, put that clip on. And then when I put that carburetor in place, um, before I bolt it back to that manifold on the engine block, I'll actually take the throttle rod and insert it through that little clamp there. Um, that is going to do not tighten it, and but that is going to make sure that the rod is in and you're not trying to weasel it in once you now tighten these bolts and that carburetor is stuck in place. So as you can see, it's kind of moving freely there. And then I take the bolts with the collars on, um, run them through that intake manifold, the carburetor, and then also the three um, gaskets, so the main one and then the two other thin ones, you gotta line it up and just put the bolt through like that and then grab the other bolt, slip it in the other side. And then once you put these long bolts all the way through that whole um, apparatus, then you could line them up on the actual uh, manifold there and hand tighten them to get them started real quick and then just uh, ratchet them down. So once it catches, I could then let go of the carburetor and really get them going, tighten them both down back and forth equally. So it, that gasket tightens down equally onto the manifold there. And there's actually a cool little thing, Yamaha, they mark it with uh, markers, uh, two little uh, marks on the bolts. And if you line up the two marks, when you tighten down the uh, bolts, you don't need an actual uh, torque uh, measurement on your uh, sockets. You can just make sure that the marks line up on the bolt and then on the manifold there, or on yeah and just line them up like that tighten them all the way you'll feel it and 
yeah, then you're tight to spec. So once those bolts are tightened down, um, I went ahead and I put that cl uh, clip or clamp back on, tighten that back down as well for the, the intake hose there. And that's real simple. And we're almost done. So next up, this is a really tough part because now the carburetor is, is on, the uh, it is, is bolted down. So I took this flathead and kind of tightened this screw that uh, tightened the throttle um, linkage, um, throttle rod in place. And this is how it should be sitting when uh, throttle is closed. So that's why I tightened the carburetor down before, or bolted it down before I tightened this throttle linkage down and then I made sure there's no slippage when I uh, opened the throttle up there and yeah so once I opened the throttle it kind of gave me more room as well to tighten that screw just a bit more but honestly it was is more than enough if you guys know a better way to tighten this screw down I would love to hear it or a different order to do it but I found no issues with doing this So then just take uh, the choke rod, clip it back on there, and yeah, there you go, we're done. That's honestly way easier than taking it apart, I feel. Obviously the second time's easier. And uh, yeah, let's uh, check her out. Carburetor installed, tightened down. Everything's good. So we're gonna fire up, I'm gonna show you guys. But like I said, we have issues at um, low RPMs at idle. Um, it tends to die. Uh, it takes a while to warm up, so I feel like one of the jets was maybe clogged. Um, who knows? It looked pretty good inside, but who knows? So uh, let's uh, start her up. Oh, I need a primer. That might help. It needs to uh, fill up. Yeah. yeah. So guys, I uh, primed it a bit, ran it uh, for a sec with the choke uh, open, and I'm gonna show you how fast this thing starts up. Johnny, open up the hose. Honestly, right away. That's unbelievable. Once the gas filled up, the carburetor filled up with gas. Beautiful. Yeah, like that. We have not had to start up like that, even after it warms up for a bit. When we start up, it usually takes a couple rounds uh, for the starter a couple maybe like a second or two for the starter to fire and then it goes um, and then it really it struggles for a bit so that's awesome anyways guys uh, if you enjoyed this video uh, of just quick you know do it yourself um, you know boat owner maintenance uh, leave us a like give us a comment uh, I love doing these things myself because it saves us money you learn a thing or two and uh, you know yeah <laughs> anyways guys that's all for the video We'll see you next time on JK Fishing.